Hey, what's up everybody? In this lesson, we are going to do a follow along on how to animate a character with the Adobe After Effects puppet tools. In this lesson, you're gonna learn all of the different options for the puppet tools, as well as how to export your character that is newly animated as an animated GIF. So let's go ahead and get started. This is our final result here of what we wanna create. To do this, we're gonna need a few things. I'm gonna go ahead and open a new project here in After Effects, and I'm gonna double click on that. Once I double click, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to my Octopus Puppet file. And I'm gonna make sure I set this to composition retain layer sizes. That's very, very important to get all of the functionality of those layers. When that happens, I hit okay. And this screen is asking if you want it still editable with different layer styles, which we really don't have on here, but we'll hit okay to begin with. All right, now that we've imported this, you're gonna notice that it's 2138 by 2138. Now that's a lot bigger than the 1080 by 1080 square I want to export, but do not worry, we will come back and play with that. I'm gonna double click because I wanna animate this in a little higher resolution and then downscale it when I make it the animated GIF. Animating in a higher resolution just gives me a little more clarity in what I'm working in. It allows me to see the pixels a little better and all that fun stuff. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and go to Composition Settings or Controller Command K, and we're gonna set the composition settings to around five seconds. One thing is if you're exactly on five seconds here and you hit OK, you're gonna notice that you're gonna get just one couple frames off of five, and that's okay. We can kind of deal with that as we go. Just be aware of that. You'll see me kind of shift my keyframes as we go. The next step is to lock down that background layer, and I'm gonna eyeball it off so it's not confusing. Next, I'm gonna highlight my octopus, and I'm gonna to go to my top toolbar. I'm gonna to look for this little thumbtack tool called the Puppet Pin Position, or Puppet Position Pin Tool, or Command or Control P on your keyboard. If you hold your left mouse button down, you will see all of the different puppet tools in this toolbox that you can use. The position tool will animate the puppet's position. The starch tool will make sure that those elements are locked down and do not distort. The puppet bend tool will bend or rotate a part of your puppet. The advanced pin tool will rotate parts of your puppet, but also scale. And then the overlap tool is used for layer order. So what part of the puppet is in front or behind another part. All of these are built off of different meshes. When we create our mesh here in a few seconds, we'll be able to show the different density of the meshes. And then we have our record options, which will allow us to play with different speeds and smoothing, etc. Let's get started with the simplest, which is the puppet position. I always like to have my show mesh checked. And this is essentially the ability to create what I like to call almost like a skeleton system. Once I have the puppet position and I go ahead and select my character, I'm gonna just zoom in and make some real estate changes here. There we go. You can see the whole puppet. All right, then I'm ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my puppet tool. This is the puppet position pin. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some pins. Where do I want to distort this character? Now immediately, you're going to see this mesh. Now this mesh can be cycled on and off, and this mesh has the ability to expand or contract. Now why would you want expansion? I like expansion just in case some of the edges are getting clipped or cut off. Uh, this is also good if you have an area that you're animating on a non-separated background. Density, you wanna be very careful with that, but density is going to be pretty heavy on your computer. Be aware that that number is going to cause less or more density, and I'm gonna just keep mine at 12 because that's a really good number for this character. And now that I have this position tool, you can see I can kind of move it, but it's not distorting the way we want it. So I'm gonna to continue to add a few more puppet position tools. And I'm just adding these in specific areas and that essentially is going to help lock down this character. So the more of these tools you have, the better. We can put some at the top of the tentacles and then start getting these tentacles to grow or shrink as you see fit. Really, really fun stuff. The next set of tools is something called the starch pin tool. Now these will come in, these will look like little red dots when you click on your mesh. These are creating less deformation for your character. So I may wanna put a couple on those eyes. 
when I'm animating just to make sure I don't get a lot of stretching in that area. I'm gonna put one down here on kind of the base of the tentacles in these areas. Uh, once again, that's just going to cause, you can see now those are all locked down a little bit better as we go. The third tool is the puppet bend tool. This is gonna work really well on an octopus, but if I go to the puppet bend tool and I click the edge of the tentacle, I get a ring. That ring has elements that you can see here, like we can scale up and down, or my favorite is we can rotate that tentacle now. So we can go ahead and add a bit of rotation. Moving downward, the puppet advance pin tool will allow you to do a lot of different things. It basically lets you do the position, the scale, kind of like the bend tool did, and the rotation like the bend tool did. Why wouldn't you just use this from the start? Well, depending on how complex you want things to be, you may not want access to all those options. Sometimes less is more. Finally, the puppet overlap tool, which is a really, really slept on tool. But if I hit the show mesh and I go ahead and I click on an area, let's click on this tool here. All of this white area is controlled by the in front levels or the extent levels. So you can see as I do the extent, I'm dragging with my left mouse button, that that changes. But if I go back now and if I set that white area, that just means that, and we're gonna need to add a little position tool here, not right on top of that. We'll just put it right here. But when we go add that area now, check that out. It's in front of the layer. So sometimes that will go behind the layer. That positioning overlapping tool is really important because it will allow layer order for you to get to work. Now that we have all of those set up, it's time to animate. Animating could never be easier because behind the scenes, the puppet tool has actually set all of these keyframes for me to use. So I'm gonna hit you on my keyframes so you can see all of those keyframes that you set. If I wanna do an animated loop, it's a simple step. I'm gonna go ahead and copy those, Control C or Command C, and I'm going to paste them. I'm gonna just move them over one frame. That's that little drop frame that I'm getting. You can see the start and the end point are exactly the same, but what you do in between is up to you. So let's go ahead and set some poses. We'll go ahead and rotate that one. The trick is you gotta kind of click away from those keyframes if it's not letting you work. We'll add that, so now we can see some rotation. Maybe we'll click on this one again and rotate that one up really high. Maybe the head at this point goes to the right there. Very, very cool. And the idea is since we've already set the back and forth of these, we're just really doing pose to pose animation. The character will always come back to that great starting point no matter what we do because we've copied and pasted those initial keyframes. Let's see what we have. It's gonna be pretty rough at first, but we'll fix that. Now that we have that good starting and ending point, we have the ability, we can go through and add easing to those center keyframes. I'm gonna hit on my keyboard function F9. You can just hit F9 if you don't have to worry about the function keys. I'm gonna go over to the good old graph editor and we're gonna look at this, what could be a little bit messy, but this mess of elements. I'm gonna go through and just look for curves that look a little off, all right? What does that mean? Well, a curve that looks a little off could just be something that's very linear and not very organic. So as I go through, you can see a lot of these are, are pretty organic, but the more organic they are, the smoother your puppet animation is going to be. This one looks a little funky. We're gonna kind of adjust that to be more of a smooth scoop. And just going through all of these elements, looking for any jagged style curves. You may not see them, you can always center your curve. Remember, we didn't animate all of those pin positions, just a few. And then this one is a little unique because on position keyframes, it will not let me use the, the drag and drop method. Remember on position keyframes, typically we have the ability to separate dimensions. 
I don't believe I have that here with the puppet tool. I'm gonna adjust these without the use of that Bezier curve. As you can see, just doing a little bit of that gives you a little bit smoother organic feel. I love that, that's looking really good. Now the final way, I'm gonna get out of my graph editor, I wanna show you that you can animate is using a real-time method. And this is pretty awesome. Let's say you have your character and you just want the head to bob side to side. Well, you can go ahead and get your puppet tool. If you hold the controller command key down, you're gonna get a little stopwatch. I'm just tapping it to show you what you get. Once you have that held down, as soon as you touch your left mouse button, it will start recording keyframes from the area that you're in. So for instance, if I hit this tool and I start recording, it's gonna record all these, and I'm gonna let go before it ends, but it gives me all of these amazing keyframes at the bottom. Now, it's gonna be really wonky, but that's what our graph editor is for. As you can see, we're gonna have some cleanup we have to do. So what I like to do is just kind of create a more organic feel um, on these. Remember, in your graph editor, if you don't separate dimensions, you still can use the easing. You know, don't worry about if it's not absolutely perfect. We're just getting some of these jagged areas out, and that's when our character looked really wonky. There we go. Take that one down. That one looks pretty good. Maybe we'll highlight this one and shoot off a bezier on the left side and the right side. This one can go away. And that one's not really needed. We'll put a double easy ease bezier there. We're just adding easing. So wherever I think it needs to curve, I'm adding easing in there. That looks great. That one looks good. Now, through the magic of After Effects, a little less jaggedy. How cool is that? All right, last step. Let's go ahead and turn back on our fun little background. And I'm gonna expand this background, so I'm gonna unlock it and hit S for scale and just pull this up just ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna hit R for rotation. And I want to set a keyframe in the beginning and a keyframe at the very end of one rotation value. Now remember, like our other keyframes, we're going to just kind of snap it over one key. And now we have that. Now you'll see we need to enter more scale. So going back to S, we're not keyframing scale, we're just pulling it up and down. We have our fun animation. Okay, but it's too big. So new composition. Here we're gonna go to our social media square landscape, which is right there. Make sure everything's set to five seconds, 30 frames a second. You can go lower or higher depending on your GIF. And I'm gonna drag the octopus puppet in here and I'm gonna right click, transform, fit to comp. And it's gonna fit it perfectly. It's five seconds and everything plays and looks amazing. We are ready to export because now we have a 1080 by 1080 composition. To export, it's easy. We're gonna to go to composition. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we're on comp one here. Composition, that's our 1080 composition. Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. That's going to open up the external program of Adobe Media Encoder. We're gonna allow access to this. Couple steps here, go to the left-hand side and search for the words animated GIF. This is where we choose the format of what we're exporting. If we want to animate this with or without transparency, you can click on the blue text and play with some of these settings. We're good the way it is. And then the output settings, we're gonna click on that. And we're gonna send this over and call it OctoGIF. All right. It's as simple as hitting play, letting that process the animation there at the bottom, and you will be greeted with a lovely GIF file that is animated. And now depending on how big or small this file is, it will be a different rendering process for each of you. The more detail, the more rendering it's gonna be. But let me get OctoGIF playing, and there OctoGIF is. How cool is that? I love it. Kind of that endless loop there. Go ahead and animate your own original character and show me what you got. I can't wait to see the creative results you make. Good luck and happy pinning.